Nepal's Hindu monarchy was abolished six years ago, but the country is yet to complete its transition to a secular democracy by declaring its new constitution. Its constituent assembly has missed several deadlines for the announcement, two in the last two months. The country's first democratic election was held in 2008 after a bloody civil war led by Maoist guerrillas overthrew the monarchy. Now Nepal's Christians, who are about 3% of the population, hope for equal rights and religious freedom to be guaranteed in the new constitution. But as Nepal's political parties continue to fail to agree on what it will contain, latest deadline estimates are the end of May. And Christians, who've suffered persecution and inequality for decades, are uncertain about their future. There is no law uh, as it is at the moment uh, in the present constitution which can identify organizations as being Christian or Muslim or Hindu like that. And according to the NGO law, they are not allowed uh, to be engaged in religious activities. So if Christian organizations are doing religious activities, they can be prosecuted. As far as the Christians are concerned, the top three agenda for us are that we should have a constitution at the earliest because country cannot go on like this, you know, the transition period is too long. So that's number one. To, you know, to institutionalize the, you know, historic gains like republic set up and secular state. These two, you know, historic gains for which, you know, thousands of people, more than 70,000 people sacrifice their lives. And uh, number three will be that there will be full religious freedom because secularism does not always mean religious freedom as we have seen in other parts of the world. Uh, we have defined full religious freedom, you know, the Inter-Religious Council in Nepal also has talked about this, you know, and other you know, minority religious groups have talked. What we have defined is like that every citizen will have the freedom to choose the religion of his or her choice, number one. Number two is that, you know, people will be free to share their faith with fellow citizens. And then uh, also people should have the freedom not to believe in any religion. When Christians in Nepal talk about the right to practice their faith, they also refer to the right to have a legal identity for their churches and organizations and the right to bury their dead. There is no uh, respect for Christianity and also uh, of course uh, we are not allowed to uh, have openly fellowship. Government allows us to uh, have fellowship inside the hall, inside the uh, uh, building but our church is not registered. That's the uh, huge uh, difficulties we have. The church uh, is not legally uh, recognized by the government. That's why the property of the church is in the name of the uh, three poor people. Sometimes uh, church lose the property. So uh, we are really worried uh, about the future. Because churches cannot be registered as churches, what's happening now is that Okay, there are a group of people who formed a committee, church committee. Now, they have bought the land on their collective names, like three people, four people, pastor, and etc., etc. Now, sometimes when they don't get on with each other, then they start saying, okay, we'll split the church. Therefore, we'll split the land. Uh, when a Christian die, there is no burial ground. So we are really um, have to hurry when person die, and also secretly and immediately uh, within the hour, we have to take into the jungle where nobody can see. Or in the, mid in the midnight, we have to take dead body. We are also not given a security uh, to bury the dead body. Uh, Sometimes Hindu coming and beating and the uh, same dead body, we are uh, actually taking out three times and bury three times. I have an example. My brother-in-law passed away and we had to drive that, uh, uh, the dead body for five hours because we did not get uh, bury a lot here, cemetery here, in a Kathmandu Valley. You see, some churches have a small piece of land where they can bury uh, their people. 
but even they have a problem of just getting access to the land. The land belongs to them, but the road is public. So when they take the dead body, the problem is that some people just come up, get together and uh, make disturbance so that they cannot reach the burial ground. Now, they are also talking about uh, electric uh, cremation. It's been on for a long time. But some, some Christians don't feel that electric cremation fulfills their spiritual kind of feelings. The inequality for Nepal's minorities reflects social and political attitudes. Nepal was a Hindu kingdom for centuries, and some Hindus now feel uneasy about losing the supremacy they enjoyed in the past. And the recent victory of the Hindu nationalist Bharti Janta Party in neighboring India has made Nepal's right-wing Hindu groups even bolder in resisting the idea of secularism and in accusing Christians of unethical conversions. The relation between the Hindus and Christians is at different levels, Dep depends who you are and who they are. Some Hindus are staunch Hindus and they just do not want to know or hear the word Christian. And some even, some intellectuals, so-called intellectuals, they repeat uh, Gandhi's statement saying, I like Christ but not Christians. Some are like that. And some are very, very helpful, very positive and very supportive. A lot of these politicians are anti-Christians now. And with the rise of the BJP in India, they think that, uh, you know, they, they, the BJP is going to support them forever. At least one political party is trying to win the votes on anti-Christian feeling. Now, that doesn't do good to Nepal. That is divisive. Conversion is entirely personal. But then they say that we are converting them by giving them enticements, which we are not doing. Even in society, when you say, when I, people come to know that I'm a Christian, or if I say I'm a Christian, they immediately jump and say, oh, you became Christian just because of the benefits, just because of the dollar, or just because of some um, assurances, or financial assurances. So they don't see the reality, they don't, don't see the truth uh, from the Bible, why, uh, how they have become Christian. Uh, in, even in constituent assembly, uh, political parties, they uh, <coughs> they get candidates from different uh, groups, different minorities, from Muslim, from uh, even gay community. You know, they have a representation from the gay community. And we are almost more than uh, three percent is uh, a community. And they just ignore us. The way our Hindu friends, you know, are going ahead, and the language they are using, the hate speech they are using, and, and then violence they are, you know, you know the exhibiting, like that forming army, forming Sena, you know, we'll attack churches, we'll destroy churches, we'll break the legs of Christians, this kind of language, it will be counterproductive to Hinduism. We have been treated in the past like second class citizen. We Christian, we do not have long history of Christianity of Nepal in 1950. Uh, since 1950, late King Tribhuvan uh, allowed Christians to live in the nation. Before Rana regime, they were not allowing Christians to live in the nations. Uh, 2006 is the year we had, uh, I mean, our nation is declared as the secular nation. Though we are here 1.1 million, Christians. I mean, government has not accepted as, uh, I mean, one of the religions of the nation. Christians are hoping and praying for the best amid the delay in announcing a new constitution. But they say they are also prepared for the worst and to carry on come what may. We have to love our brothers irrespective of their faith irrespective of their level of uh, spirituality. Because God, there is only one God, and there is only one creator. Therefore, they may be Hindus, they may be Muslims, whatever. They are still God's creation, and they are our brothers. As Christians, you know, we are always prepared to work 
and to live our faith under any circumstances. So hindrances, difficulties, obstacles do not hinder Christians from living their Christian faith and also propagating and sharing their faith. Uh, even though there are some voices, some groups of people, you know, who are not very happy with this and who would like to see Nepal become a Hindu kingdom again, but I think uh, Nepal cannot go back.